A very good morning. I'm Amilashmi Gaudawan here. Today, my friends and I are here in a virtual meeting to do a group presentation for our assignment. Well, this assignment contains five questions and let's start with Li Zixuan for the problem one. My name is Li Zixuan and today I'm going to show you guys how to solve the problem one. And the following are prices of sanitizer so at a few selected stores in a district A during COVID-19 pandemic. Based on the sample data, at level of significance, can we conclude the average price of sanitizer in District A is 10 ringgit 50? Then, make your conclusions using the p-value approach with the aid of Microsoft Office Excel. The price of sanitizer in District A is showing 10 ringgit, 11.50, 9 ringgit 70 cent, 11.20, 10.70, 10.20, and 9.70. So, that once, how do we going to calculate the answer? So the given information, the level of significance is 10 ringgit 50 cents. And then, the sample size, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here, so it's 7. And to check whether the average price of sanitizer in District A is 10 ringgit 50 cents, let's now devote the average price of the sanitizer. Now hypothesis equal 10 ringgit 50 cents and Assume alternative hypothesis now doesn't equal 10 ringgit 50 cents. And we can show the answer by doing a table in Excel. So, uh, the t test using Excel and output it is as follow. First of all, we need to uh, count the mean first. How do we count the mean? We can, equal, uh, we can type equal average bracket and we select all the table in this table and then bracket and then we will get the answer of 1042 for variance also the same steps in excel which is we e equal var point p bracket and the table and select all the data in the table and then close the bracket and then we will get 0 0.44 for standard deviation we equal standard deviation and select all the data in table 1 and then close the bracket we will get 0.72 the hypothesized mean difference is 10.5 degree of freedom also called as df is 6 how do we get this answer we use sample size minus 1 so we can get this answer for t step t step is um, we have to show it in the excel as we can see t step is b15 minus E18 divided by B17 square root B14. What does it mean? For B15, which is mean, we divide by hypothesis mean difference. And then we divide again the standard deviations and then we square root 7 because it's the sample size. So we can so we get the answer of negative 0.26. And then by uh, calculating the p-value for one tail, we we need to equal TDs bracket ABS B20 B20 is the t-step and B19 which is the uh, DF and then we put it one at the behind because it's one tail and then we close the bracket so we get the answer of 0 0.4 and then for uh, p-value two tail we use the same formula, just change the number behind into 2 as it's 2 tail. For T critical 1 tail, we equal TINV 2 multiple 0 0.05 which is the level of significance. And then uh, we uh, put the DF at behind which is uh, 6 lah. And then we close the bracket. So uh, we get the answer of 1.94. And then same to the two tails, but we just uh, we don't have to multiply it by two, so we just put it uh, 0 0.05 and six TINV, and then we get 2.45. Uh, so uh, the critical value uh, for two tail is obtained as 2.45, and since p value is not less than the level of significance, which is this one and this one uh, 
Therefore, to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the average price is equal to 10 ringgit 50 cents. Thank you. And I'll pass the screen to problem 2, which is Willy San. Um, my name is Willy San, and I'm going to present questions to the question, which is a doctor wants to compare the average price between two different brands of sanitizer during COVID-19. And the reason he record the selling price um, brand A and brand B based on six and actually it's seven random select stores respectively. The recorded price are recorded in table two um, and based on the sample data at 0 0.1 level of significance, can we claim that the average price of brand A is lower than brand B? Make your conclusion using the p-value approach. And the answer shown by me is state. Step one is state the hypothesis. And now hypothesis, which is H0 equals to mu1 my equals to mu1 equals to mu2. <laughs> the average price, the average selling price of brand A and brand B are the same. And alternative hypothesis, which is H2 H1 and is mu1 smaller than mu2. And we need to reject mu reject now hypothesis if p value low, lower or equal to alpha 0 0.1 at the significant level and um, we can summary that brand a has six um six, six prices and brand b has seven prices and the sum of the brand a is 64.7 brand b is 75 that average is the mean and we can Sum all, take the sum and divide that the, the number of the prices and we get 10.7833 and the variance is we take this and um, the prices um, square then plus all the prices we square and divide by the number yeah mm. then the step 3 is we can we use this test statistic to find the p-value approach and t0 equals to mean 1 minus mean 2 minus 0 is mu 1 minus mu 2 and we don't know the mu then so we just put 0 and then 0 0.3259 is um uh, sorry standard deviation full standard deviation um and this square root 1 over the number of brand A plus 1 over the number of brand B. Then we can get the answer 0 0.3806. Yeah, the step 4 is we can um, count the critical value <laughs> is, which is T over alpha T um, alpha over 2 then um, number of brand A plus number of brand B and minus 2. And we can, we can, um, we, we, we find the answer, then we can take the answer 0 0.05.11. Then using the T, T table, we get the answer 1.796. Then reject now hypothesis if T0 equals to 0 0.338. Um, um, larger than 1.7. Nine, six. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis at 0 0.1 significant level. And in conclusion, we do not reject H null since T0 smaller or not equal to T0.05 and 11. There is not enough evidence to indicate that the average price of brand A is lower than brand B. That's all from me. Thank you. Well, let's continue with our friend Wei Eun for Problem 3. Hey, my name is Ang Wei Yen. So, next I'm going to present about Question 3. The table 3 shows that the selling price of a specific brand of sanitizer at 6 stores before and after the COVID-19 pandemic at 0 0.05 level of confidence level can be made a conclusion that on average, the price has not changed. Make your conclusion using the p-value approach with the aid of Microsoft Office Excel. So, this is the table. Next. Uh, for the answer, we have to go to Excel, then choose Data, then press Data Analysis Tools.
Then after that, you have to choose scroll down and choose key test pair to sample for memes. After that, press OK. Next, for variable 1 range, you have to choose before, which is from A7 to G7. For variable 2 range, you have to choose after, which is from range A8 to G8. Okay, next, click label, and then the alpha is 0 0.05 because of the uh, level of confidence. So after that, uh, press OK. So after doing the table, it will show everything here that we need to know. The mean, the variance, the hypothesis, and the total path and quantile path. So after this, we have to uh, start to state out our steps. So for step 1, we have to state the hypothesis, which is for now hypothesis, uh, mu equals to 0 which is our claim and then for alternative hypothesis which is H1 it's mu not equal to 0 so from this we can know that this is a two-tailed test because of the equal sign and unequal sign so move on to the step 2 set the division rule if p value is lesser than the significance level 0.05 the null hypothesis will be rejected if p value is greater than significance level 0.05 the null hypothesis is failed to reject Step 3, find the p-value. So the p-value we can find from the table above, from uh, the Excel file just now, which is uh, total test 0.20587698.2. So this is our p-value for this question. So step 4, make the decision. Since the p-value is 0.2059 which is greater than the significance level 0.05, the null hypothesis is not rejected. We can conclude that the null hypothesis is not rejected because there is no sufficient evidence to say that the selling price of sanitizers at 6 stores has changed on average. So that's all for me. Next, I will pass to AB to explain about question 4. Hi, well, I'm Abhilashni Gaudawan. Today, I'm here to give explanation for question number 4. Well, table 4 shows the selling price of 3 different brands of sanitizer at base on 4 randomly selected supermarkets. At 90% confidence level, can we conclude there is a significant difference in mean price of 3 brands of sanitizer? Make conclusion using the p-value approach with the aid of Microsoft Office Excel. Well, this table 4 shows 3 brands which is brand A, brand B, brand C and also the prices of those sanitizers in 4, super, four different supermarkets. Well, first of all, we should state the hypothesis. The first step is to state the null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis equals to mean 1 equals to mean 2 which is equals to mean 3. Alternative hypothesis is at least one of the mean is not equal. Well, the formula and analysis plan which is for the analysis, the significance level is 0.1. Well, from the 100%, we have to deduct 90% of confidence level in order to gain significant level. So, the significant level is 10% and I have converted into decimals. Next, we should analyze the sample data. Well, I have summarized in those into groups, count, sum, average and variance. Well, we have three groups which is brand A, brand, brand B and brand C. And we have four count since we have four supermarkets. Besides, the sum is the value for the money. And I found average where 42.1 divided by 4 and I got this average using formula in Excel. And for the variance part, I used the standard deviation to find variance. Beside that, I also use source of variation such as sample size, degree of formula, um, mean square, test F, p-value and also f-critical, which is between group and within group. In order for me to find F statistics is given by F equals to mean square between divided by mean square error. So my F value was 0 0.0288 while my F critical was 3.066. Besides the P value is 0 0.9717. Therefore, since the P value is 0 0.9 717, which is greater than significant level, which is 0 0.1, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Thus, do not reject the hypothesis because there, there is not sufficient evidence for significant differences in mean price of three brands of sanitizer. 
That's all from me for problem 4. Now I would like to pass the screen to Wang Jing and Cheryl for problem 5. Thank you. Good day everyone. My name is Wang Jing. Today I'm here to solve problem 5 with Cheryl. A manager of a product sales group believes made by an employee Y depends on how many years that employee has been with the company X1 and how he or she scored on a business aptitude test X2. A random sample of 8 employees provides the following refer to table 4. So question A, run a regression analysis based on the data in table 4 using Microsoft Office Excel. Based on the output, propose a regression equation that can be used to predict number of sales by an employee. Summary output was done with data analysis that can be found from data. It is required to fill in where our Y, X1, and X2 come from. Then, we need to press label, confidence level, and new worksheet. After that, table 4 will automatically come up. Coefficient in the table is calculated with the regression equation. Y equals to beta plus beta 1 times X1 plus beta 2 times x2. So, beta equals to 21.293, beta 1 equals to 3.103, and beta 2 equals to 4.698. We just have to put the equation into coefficient, which is intercept equals to 21.293, x1 equals to 3.103, and x2 equals to 4.698. Then, the total of y is y equals to 21.293 plus 3.103x1 plus 4.698x2. For part B, interpret the coefficient value of each independent variable in the contracted model. Beta 1 indicates that an unit increase in x1 would increase or decrease the value of y by beta 1 unit, given that the other independent variables remain constant. Beta 1 equals to 3.103 implies that an increase in the years that employee has been with the company would increase the sales by 3.103, given that the other variables remain constant. Beta 2 equals to 4.698 implies that an increase in the score on the business aptitude test would increase the sales by 4.698, given that the other variables remain constant. Now, I will pass 5C to Cheryl. So, hi, I'm Cheryl Tanmini. And now I'm going to discuss about 5C. So 5C is each independent variable sharing a significant linear relationship with the dependent variable. Verify at 0.05 level of significance. Make your conclusion based on the p-value in the Excel output. So, first the hypothesis test of significance for the individual parameters is h now, uh, beta i equals to 0, or h1 beta i not equals to 0, and the significance level is 0.05. So, for the hypothesis test for beta 1, if beta 1 equals to 0, there is no significant linear relationship. But if beta 1 does not equal to 0, there is a significant linear relationship. So, the decision rule is, reject H now if the p-value is smaller than the significance value, which is 0 0.05. So, for the hypothesis test of beta 1, the p-value as we can see from the table is uh, 0 0.18. So, the p-value is uh, bigger and equals to big, uh, bigger than the 0 0.05. So, the decision rule is, since the p-value greater than the significance value 0 0.05, so we do not reject the H now. And we can make a conclusion for beta 1, which is, there is a no significant linear relationship between sales achieved by that employee and the years that employee has been with the company. So next, we are going to hypothesis test for beta 2. Beta 2, uh, the decision rule is also the same. We check the H now if the p-value is smaller than the significance value, which is 0 0.05. So the p-value for beta 2, which we can see in the table, is 0 0.08. It is also bigger than the significance value. So our decision rule we can make is, since the p-value greater than uh, 0 0.05, so we do not reject the H now. And we also can make a conclusion for this beta 2, a hypothesis test beta 2, which is there is a no significant linear relationship between sales achieved 
by the employee and the score of an employee on a business aptitude test. So, uh, that's all from me and Huang Jing for question 5. Thank you very much.